Hey Willow fam, thank you for joining me for this episode of Chrissy Cooks. Unfortunately, today we are not going to be cooking. Yeah, we're not cooking today. As we all know, we have no more time to waste. We have no more time to be thinking about big things. We just have to get it down and get it right. Which means we're going to have to tap into our inner grandmothers, our inner mamas, our, our inner big mamas, whatever you call your elder, your auntie, your great cousin, whoever. The best cooks that was ever in your family, those are the ones who we need to summon to come in and give us the guidance that we need to make this holiday season pop. Today, I'm going to discuss with you nine things that you must know when Southern cooking for the holidays. You must know these nine things, and I'm going to give you a couple of bonuses at the end, so yeah. Hey, what up, fam? Thank you for joining me today. My name is Chrissy. For those of you who do not know me, I live my life as a mom and a wife right here on YouTube. Today, I am not in the kitchen. As you can see, I'm actually in my office. And somebody asked me a question. They asked me what type of tips would I give them to try to make sure, y'all excuse me, my throat is sore. I have a little cough drop, so if y'all see it, don't talk about me. But anyway, I had somebody ask me what tips would I give them to ensure that they did everything right or they made sure that everything was together for the holidays. I have one lady who said that this year the holidays is going to be spent at her house and she wanted to know what can i what can i tell her that will help her with cooking now she says she's not the best cook but i have some ways for you to work around that i have a thanksgiving side series that will help you with any type of side dish southern side dish that you can create that your family will love so i'll leave that up here in the cards for those of you who's interested all right let's get started number one now i don't care what you're cooking i don't care if you're cooking a turkey i don't care if you're cooking a ham i don't care if you're cooking chitlins i don't care if you're cooking roast beef I don't care what type of meat you're cooking for the holidays. You must have a bread. Doesn't matter if it's cornbread. Doesn't matter if it's rolls. It doesn't matter if it's biscuits. It doesn't matter if it's loaf bread. As long as you have some type of bread, it will be okay. You must serve your holiday meal with a bread. Any kind of bread, preferably a homemade bread. And if you want to know how to make some homemade rolls, I have a recipe for those too. If you want to know how to make some brown butter um, cornbread, I have a recipe for those too. Just go back into my videos, you'll find them. But you must, you must make bread. Have some type of bread to be served with your meal. Number two, if you are destined to have a holiday spread with a soul food undertone or soul food theme or soul food period, anywhere close to anything that you're cooking, you must have hot sauce. Don't go through the holidays without a bottle of hot sauce. If you are serving food to your family and they're used to a southern spread and this is your first year make sure you're gonna have some hot sauce now all the seasoned ones who are used to having thanksgiving or uh friendsgiving or uh christmas brunch or dinner or whatever if you're used to having it at your house you already know this but you must have a bottle of hot sauce and don't come with a little bit at the bottom like this. No, ma'am. Go ahead and get you a fresh bottle of hot sauce and make sure it's out so that people can see it. Okay? Because it doesn't matter how good you season your food. It doesn't matter what you put in your food. They're going to want hot sauce. So have a fresh bottle of hot sauce ready. Okay? 
You'll thank me later. Number three. Now, if you're cooking collard greens, if you're going to cook collard greens for your holidays, let me tell you something. You must use smoked meat. I don't care what kind of smoked meat you use. I don't care if you use smoked turkey tails. I don't care if you use smoked turkey wings. I don't care if you use ham hock. I don't care what you use as long as it's smoked meat. Smoked meat has a very distinct flavor to it and it has a very nice salt aspect to it. So you must use some type of meat that is smoked, okay? It doesn't have to have a whole lot of fat on it, but it must be a smoked meat. Smoked meat has a have a great flavor to it, and it's always going to complement your collard greens. Okay? Now, another tip for your collard greens is when you're getting ready to serve your collard greens, if you look or when you think they're done and you think they may be seasoned enough, I definitely want you to taste them. But I want you to first look at the liquid that is in your pot. If your pot of liquid that's surrounding your collard greens, if it's clear, your collard greens are not seasoned. They are not going to be good. Don't serve them. Don't serve them to auntie. Don't serve them to grandma or definitely grandpa. Out of the question. If your juice or what I would call or what everybody else calls pot liquor. If your pot liquor tastes good, your greens are good. If your pot liquor is bland and has no salt, no flavor, no smokiness, no nothing to it, your greens aren't good. It should have a murky look to it. You should not be able to see straight through your liquid that's in the pot around your collard greens. If you can, they are not seasoned. You need to do something. You need to get busy and get the seasoning, those collard greens, and let them boil some more. Okay? Do not serve someone some collard greens that you can see straight through the water or the liquid or like I call it or like my family calls it, pot liquor. If you can see through it, I'm sorry, but you have not executed that dish well. You should not be able to see through that liquid. It should be very murky. And then you taste it. Do you need to add a little something to it? Make sure you taste them collard greens before you serve them, okay? Don't serve nobody no bland collard greens because they're going to talk about you. I promise you that. Number four, listen closely. When serving a meal for the holidays, any type of southern theme, like I said, I don't care if you're frying chicken, they, there are must. You must have a meat. You must have a vegetable. You must have a starch. You must have a bread. And you must have a beverage. Don't matter what kind of meat you have. You know, at my household, during the holidays, we have several types of meat several types but you can have as many as you want even if you choose to have one one is fine as long as you have a meat okay as long as you have a vegetable it doesn't matter if it's collard greens it doesn't matter if it's string beans it doesn't matter if it's cabbage as long as you have at least one vegetable okay now as far as starches in my household we usually have several okay you can have some yams you can have some rice you can have macaroni and cheese you can have anything that's a starch but you must have a starch and i done already told y'all about that bread now you got to have some bread don't matter what kind because even if it's loaf bread you know we can take a piece of chicken and wrap it around and put a little hot sauce on it and that can be a meal okay and you must have a beverage you know sweet tea soda whatever kool-aid whatever you want to have just make sure you have a beverage and those are the bare minimums meat vegetable starch bread and beverage as long as you have one of each you should be okay number five <laughs> 
listen all soul food cooks wash their meat okay we wash our meat in cold water with lemon vinegar salt what have you but we wash our meat okay we're gonna wash our meat we're gonna wash all of our meat we don't care whether it's red meat we don't care whether it's pork we don't care if it's chicken turkey we don't care what it is we gonna wash our meat okay and that is not up for discussion we are not gonna have a discussion about this we gonna move on to the next one okay number six if you are planning on making a gravy to go with your meal always use the drippings from your meat first number one it's gonna make it a lot easier on you you're not gonna have to really season as much because nine times out of ten if you've seasoned that meat well that gravy is already going to be partially if not all the way seasoned depending on how much seasoning you put um on your meat if your meat tastes good and it's really highly seasoned then you should be good with the drippings from your meat you might have to add a little bit of salt you know you might have to you know add a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper you know a little bit of the seasons that you added to the meat but you shouldn't have to go overboard and highly season that gravy because if you're using the drippings from your um your meat you should be good to go because that gravy is always going to complement that meat so by using the drippings from that meat perfect match number seven whenever you choose or if you choose to fry anything throughout your meal within your meal anything any type of meat if you choose to fry it always use to use a cast iron pan cast iron pan will heat evenly and it will give you the best crisp on your meat always use a cast iron pan and when you're done with it and you're done with the oil make sure you discard the oil okay and make sure you always use a little bit of oil to oil your pan down and use a lint free paper towel to go around and remove the excess oil after you've oiled up your pan and that will keep your pan nice until the next time that you use it but always use a cast iron pan when frying something okay it's a good investment so if you don't have one go get you one and they even sell them already pre-seasoned but i have one that was seasoned by my father and it's like umpteen years old if you don't have that luxury they already sell them in the store pre-seasoned so get you one okay and make sure you always give them a good little oil rub down after you use them you don't want them to get dry that you don't want so you need to make sure you give them a little oil after you're done and it should be good until the next time you cook all right now any fruit or this is number eight any fruit or vegetable that you are cooking for the holidays you must wash them you must wash your collard greens you must wash your cabbage you must wash your green beans you must wash all of your fruits and vegetables if you're making apple pies make sure you wash your apples and make sure you inspect all of your fruits and vegetables thoroughly before you cook them you don't want to cook any dirty greens because when they come up out of the ground they got sand on them you don't want to feed that to your family you want to make sure you wash them thoroughly you know and sometimes with greens you know we can wash them five or six times until the water comes out clear so be mindful when you cooking apples to make apple pie look at those apples make sure they don't have any little rotten spots in them you don't want to serve that to your family okay so make sure you inspect and wash your fruits and vegetables thoroughly before you're using them in your recipes for the holidays now that was nine tips now i have a couple more these are gonna be some little bonuses for you okay little bonus now this is the first bonus okay when you're making any kind of salad i don't care if it's potato salad pasta salad um macaroni salad if you're making this make sure you make it up 
the day before it needs to be served because it has to sit in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours for all of your flavors to melt together so that they give you the proper flavor that you want now granted if you make it today and you have to serve it today it'll probably still be good but it's not going to reach its maximum flavor until it's actually set for 24 hours covered in the refrigerator okay You'll get the best flavor if you let it sit and let all the flavors marry for 24 hours in the refrigerator covered, of course. Okay? A lot of people may not know this. A lot of people may know this. If you're cooking collard greens, if you're cooking any type of greens, make sure that if you, if you decide to get your collard greens before the first frost, that means before the temperatures dip down in your area and it gets really cold. You know when you wake up in the morning, you got that light layer of ice that's on your windshield. That's the first frost. That's how you know that the season has definitely changed. Okay. Now after that time, you can pick your collard greens and you shouldn't have to worry about them being tough or it taking you a long time to get them um nice and tender in your um, pot you won't have to worry about that because what happens during the first frost is it changes the texture of your collard greens okay it brings out the sweetness in them and it loosens up the texture okay now if you happen to get your collard greens before the first frost you're going to add about a teaspoon of baking soda to your collard greens okay about a teaspoon now if you have a whole bunch of collard greens a teaspoon will do okay if you're cooking collard greens for your family and you got them before the first frost go ahead and put a teaspoon of baking soda in. we'll go ahead and release those proteins and help to make your greens tender okay just letting you know that if you're like i've been boiling these collard greens for hours and they still tough just go ahead and add a teaspoon of baking soda and it'll help you out tremendously all right if you have any tips that you'd like to add go ahead and leave them in the comment section below i hope this helps you guys out for the holidays and cooking if you have any questions that you need to ask me you can leave that in the comment section below as well if you have not already make sure you like share and go ahead and hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when i upload my next video thank you guys for joining me and until next time peace Happy cooking!